every single problem on the homework. That was kind of that was kind of bad. One, two, four, five, six, you heard that period six? You're bad. Bad dog. Can you guys start working on the Coke snowflake? We said some people in um, period six you know, doing it on the board and stuff. Oh yeah, I was like, what are you thinking? Just going to look a little fun and enter here this morning. i tell you what, number one! <laughs> uh, oh, that's real. Find the sum of all the three-digit positive multiples of seven. Okay, what's the smallest three-digit multiple of seven? 105. And then you think, 105. And then, what's the next one going to be? 112. Just keep adding seven until you get to the last one. What's the biggest one? 994. You are correct, sir. Just add them up. Now, what kind of series is this? Is this arithmetic or geometric? Because if it is, we have formulas. It's arithmetic. it's arithmetic because you keep on adding 7, right? To get the multiples of 7. So, what's the formula for the sum of the first, the first few terms of an arithmetic series? The sum of the first n terms is n over 2, first term plus last term, right? The only problem is, look, we know the first term is 105. We know the last term is 994. The only problem with this is we don't know how many terms there are. Like, what term is that? Is that the 50th term? 60th term? What is it? How do we figure that out? Oh. We did this last chapter. What? Yeah, in what equation, though? In this equation, remember? Remember? Why do I say remember? Does that look familiar? Yeah. yeah, that's the explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence. sequence. So if you think of these numbers as, as a sequence, this is the first term, the second term, this is the nth term. We need to solve for n then. What do I plug in for a n? We did this last chapter, people. 994. What do I plug in for a 1? 105 plus n minus 1 d. What do I plug in for d? 7. Seven. If you solve for n in this equation, that will tell you what term that is. So like if n comes out to 100, I don't know what it's going to come out to. If it comes out to 100, then that's the 100th term, and that's the number that you put right there. So solve for n in this equation, whatever number you get, you put it there. And that's not a zero, that's just the answer you get. I'm not gonna do like everything for you. You guys gotta like do something. Wait a minute, number two, that now that is a joke. I'm not gonna do two. Yeah. Well what's the trick for finding multiples of seven? Keep on adding seven. Because right. okay, everybody knows ninety-eight is fourteen times seven, right? Oh. So if you add another seven, then that's hundred and five, right? Oh, yeah, I didn't know. Okay, then go back to something you know then. What is something you know? 77. 77. You didn't even know 77. <laughs> then go 84, 91, 98, 105. Okay. What about 994? How about just divide it by 7 and see if the remainder comes out 0? And then if it's not, then adjust it. Okay, I'll do one of them for you. Maybe this is not a joke. Pick either 2A or 2B. I'm not gonna, they're both the same. I'll tell you right now. They're both infinite geometric series, so you just use the formula. Which one you want to do? Okay, A. Here is 2A. 1 minus 1 third plus 1 9 minus 1 27th plus dot dot dot, my pretty. Is this an infinite geometric series? Yes, what's the common ratio? What do I need to multiply by to get the next term? Negative one. Negative one third. Is the absolute value of that less than one? Yeah. Then I can use the formula. And what's the formula? First term over one minus r. That's your answer. It's that simple. You've got to memorize the formula. First term over one minus r. That's one of the most beautiful formulas there is in mathematics. It's so simple, yet it can do so much.
That's like super powerful. It's like a very tiny tool in your tool belt, except it's super powerful. It's like a laser beam. Okay, we're just moving on. Number three. Is that like every single problem, people? Yes. <laughs> By putting those carrots and those light blue things, that doesn't make it look like any less. You know. <laughs> okay, for what value of x will this series, okay, here's, a, here's an infinite series. First of all, you got to ask yourself, is this a geometric series? Yeah. yeah, so come on, that's what we're studying, right? Arithmetic and geometric, this is the review from Algebra 2. So how do you find the sum of an infinite geometric series? What's the formula again? First term over 1 minus r. And what is the common ratio? 2x. I want that to equal 3 fifths. Can you solve that equation? I think you can solve it. Just cross multiply it. You take it from here. Okay, number four. I'm going to do one of them. I'm not going to do all three. I will do one of them. And which one is it? You want me to do A, B, or C? Okay, let's do B. Okay, now in order for a G, these are all geometric, okay? In order for a geometric series to converge, in other words, it adds up to some finite number, then what, what did we learn yesterday? The absolute value of R has to be less than 1. This is how you find the interval of convergence. In other words, what are the values of X so that the series will converge to some finite number? and not go off to infinity. Okay, so look at problem 2b. What is r? What is the common ratio? What do I need to multiply by to get the next term? 3x. What? We're looking at the same problem? We're talking about b now. 3 minus x. Okay, negative x minus 3. Everybody agree that's the common ratio? So in order for the series to converge, the absolute value of r has to be less than 1. You write that on your paper. Now, okay, if you're doing problem 4a, what's the common ratio? The absolute value of 3x got to be less than 1. That's how you do a. And then what about c? Let's just write it down for funsies then. What's the common ratio for problem, problem c? Negative 2, over Negative 2 over x. The absolute value of that has to be less than 1. There, I set up all three problems for you. I, I did it. I can't believe I did it. You just suckered me in, yeah? I would, as again, I got caught in your web of deception. <laughs> you should know by now. Anyway, you solve this inequality, and that will give you the interval of convergence. Okay, I'll, this one is super easy. I'll do the medium one, and I'll leave the hard one to you. Okay, how do you solve this inequality right here? What do I do? Okay, I only can write it one side of the board because we're square both sides. Square both sides, come on. You only do that if you have to. I don't think you need to. Okay, can I go from this step to this step? Yes or no? Can I just get rid of that minus sign? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes, because I wrote it. How? <laughs> Mr. Park, how did that minus sign disappear? That's because, okay, do you remember this? The absolute value of A times the absolute value of B is equal to the absolute value of A times B. Remember when we studied absolute value in the sec first or second quarter? Yeah. First quarter. So isn't this the same thing as the absolute value of negative 1 times the absolute value of x minus 3? Like if you use that property right there. And what's the absolute value of negative 1? 1. So, so you just get that. Okay, just keep staring. And do we know how to solve this kind of inequality? Yes. If you have the absolute value of gorilla is less than banana, you put gorilla in the middle, and what do you put here and here? Negative banana and banana. And then if you want to solve for x, what do you do? Add 3 across 4, <laughs> 2, and 4. There you go. This is called the interval of convergence. In other words, if x is a number between 2 and 4, like 2.1 or 3.5, then the series that I gave you right there will converge to some finite number. Number five, okay, this is very puzzling. This is very puzzling. I am, I am befuddled. 
I'm not going to write out the whole thing. You got it on your paper. Is this in geometric series? Yes. Yes. What's the common ratio? What do I have to keep multiplying by? Sine squared x. So how do you find the sum of an infinite geometric series? First term, First term over, over 1 minus r. Hey, you somebody. That's cosine squared x. And if you don't know that, go home cook rice. And then that simplifies to tangent squared x. Isn't that beautiful? See, that's how we review our trig identities. Trig what? <laughs> oh, and by the way, tonight's homework, you've got to know r kiss theta and the Moff's theorem. What's that? Oh, man. Okay, number six. Okay, th isn't this the class we did the bouncing ball problem yesterday? Yes. Yeah. Why is it on the board? Didn't I teach you? And I taught you the shortcut too, right? Didn't I? That was a joke. No, no, that's okay. No, no, no. I like doing unnecessary work. No. Just like you, yeah? Six. No, no, I love doing this. A ball is dropped from a height of eight meters. Each time it rebounds to a height, 75% of the distance that it has fallen. So what is that? Six. six. Then it goes down six. Then it goes up. What's three-fourths of that? 4.5. Then it goes down to 4.5. And it just does this forever. How far did the moth travel? In other words, what is the sum of all the arrows, the lengths of all the arrows? Now, what was the secret? Now, there's lots of ways of doing this problem. You know what some people do? They add up all the down arrows, which is an infinite geometric series. Then they add up all the up arrows, and then they add the two together, like this. Okay, what's the first down arrow? A, all over 1 minus R. What's the common ratio if, you, if it rebounds to a height that's 75%? No, yeah, three fourths. Now add up on the up arrows. What's the first up arrow? So first term over one minus r, and then you just add them together and get your answer, right? But what did I show you yesterday? Come on, this was less than twenty-four hours ago. Yeah, group them like this. So what's the first one? What's eight plus six? So go fourteen all over one minus r, and there's your answer, fifty-six. Right? And you can see it's the same because you can just factor out the thing and you get 8 plus 6 or 8. Okay, but it's just a matter of how you think about it. Okay, now number 7, I am only going to do one. Either the area or the perimeter, I'm not going to do both. Do not insult my intelligence. Pick one. Okay, first of all, you've got to actually read the problem, which period 6, a lot of them didn't do. You start with an equilateral triangle and the first side has a length of 12. Connect the midpoints, and another equilateral triangle is formed. Then you connect those midpoints, and another one is formed. And another, and another, and another, and another. It goes on forever. So if I were to add up all the areas of all the equilateral triangles, so what do you get? Well, what's the area of the first equilateral triangle? Root 3 over 4 times the side squared. Okay, let's just leave 12 squared. You guys can't even do that. Right? Okay, now the next equilateral triangle. Root 3 over 4 times the side squared. What is the side? 6. 6, because it's the midpoint, so it's only half, right? What's the next equilateral triangle? Root 3 over 4 times the side squared. 3, because it gets halved every time, right? And then you keep on going. Hey, this is an infinite geometric series. That's what we're studying. What's the common ratio? What do I have to multiply 144 by to get 36? One fourth. One what do I have to multiply 36 by to get 9? One fourth. One fourth. Is the absolute value of that less than 1? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I can use the formula, which is the first term. I'm just going to write 144 already. All over 1 minus r. And there you go. That's the sum of all the equilateral triangles. That formula is so powerful, people. Don't you feel powerful now that you know it? Okay, number eight. Okay, I, this problem, I admit, okay, I put this in to separate the sheep from the goats. How many people got it? So period six on you. Who put the zero up already? 
<laughs> okay, let's see show of hands. Shall you got it? Got it by, on your own too? What? Sit down and work. Yeah. No, because in period six, had two people, but one, pe one person typed it in on Wolfram Alpha. Of course, Wolfram Alpha, Alpha gives you the answer, but you got to know how to get it. Okay, now be prepared. You might want to get out a tissue or something because this is going to bring tears to your eyes. This is one of the most beautiful things you will ever see in your life. No, I'm serious. I think there are like three people who actually, they were weeping after I showed them this in period six. Okay. What do you? What's the first thing you should do? Just stare at it. Go to the next problem. Just look at the bottom. Write that down and done with homework. No. Write out the first few terms. Plug in one, two, three, four, and see what you get. One half. One half plus two fourths plus three eighths. And okay, I think that's enough. Is this arithmetic or geometric? It's geometric. Oh, really? So to get from there to there, you multiply by one. So to get from there, you multiply by one. You multiply by one. No, it is not geometric. See, that's the problem. It's not geometric. However, if we massage it, if we loamy it, it will become geometric. Watch this now. Now, I'm going to show you this once. You're going to have to repeat this either on the quiz or the test, or maybe both. Watch what I do. This is so beautiful. Wait, I need a tissue. I might start speaking. <laughs> is that geometric? Yes. Yeah, the common ratio is one half. Yeah, but Mr. Park, that's not the same as the original because look, I see a half there, but that's two fourths. This is only one fourth. So add another line in like this. Because now look, I get two fourths. See, one fourth plus one fourth is two fourths. Yo, yeah, well, Mr. Park, this is only two eights. That's three eights. Well, then add another eight in. Add another line in. Yo, yeah, well, Mr. Park, this is four sixteenths. I only see three sixteenths here. Then add in another line. And then you just keep on doing that forever. Can you see that this is the same as the original problem? See? One half plus two fourths plus three eighths plus four sixteenths plus five thirty twos and so forth. <laughs> okay, but the reason why you do that is, hey, this is an infinite geometric series. So I can use the formula. First term over 1 minus r. What is r? In fact, what is r for everyone? Half. So what does that equal to? Does it really take you that long to figure out it's 1? Oh boy. That's just the first line. So if you add up all the numbers in the first line, you get 1. OK, let's look at the second line then. Hey, that's geometric. First term over 1 minus r, half. So if I add up all the numbers in the second row, you get a half. Oh my gosh. Okay, now with the third row, first term over 1 minus r, mm -hmm. <laughs> 1 fourth. Okay, fourth row, first term over 1 minus r, 1 eighth. But then, Mr. Park, the thing keeps going on forever. That's right, it goes on forever. So if you want to find the sum of this series, you basically have to add up all of these numbers. Yeah, but hey, that's, a, that's an infinite geometric series. Right? Because look, common ratio 1 half. So what is that equal to? First term over 1 minus r, 2. <laughs> So basically, you got it. Oh, Mr. Park, we have two. No, I, I, it's, I, what? I <laughs> it's an infinite number of infinite geometric series. See, that's an infinite geometric series. So is that, so is that, so is that, all the way down. And then when you add them all up, you get this, which is another infinite geometric series. Isn't that unbelievable? So this is what I do every year. I change that number. <laughs> no, you are this problem's on the test. You just gotta be able to do it. 
Okay, so I just rotate every year, three, four, five, I put E one year. Does it really matter? It's a number, right? So it's going to be a single digit number, that's all I can tell you. So if I were you, you watch me do it on the board, therefore can you do it on your own on the test? No, you should pick another number and do it, like pick three and see if you can do it. And then you know how you can check to see if you got the right answer? Wolfram Alpha. <laughs> well, if you start crying on the test, won't you give it away to the people that it's the problem? What? No, people just cry on the test anyways. What? Never mind. You guys, half of you have not even remember I told you this is on the test. So. <laughs> and the Coke Snowflake, did I give you any hints yesterday? Or was this the class or was that period four? Look it up online. No, no, no. Don't look it up online. I don't want... You're not going to learn it that way. Oh, that was no. No, I actually showed them how to do it. It's okay. So since we're on video here, this is just remorse. What's that? I told you, I'm the shark. I'm the shark. And then you're a remora. You just latch on like that. You know the remora? You latch on. So when I eat, when I eat all the bits and pieces fall off and the, the remora grabs it. Yeah? So that's fighting. Oh, that, those are whales. <laughs> it's just the shark. The remoras latch onto the shark. Really? Yeah. Anyway. Okay, I'm going to show you the area. I'm going to show you how to start. Because when I grade this quiz, I last year I gave out so many zeros, it was ridiculous. It wasn't even funny. <laughs> okay, what is the area of this first equilateral triangle? Root 3 over 4 times the sine squared. If you don't know this formula, it's pretty much over. Yeah? Okay, now, how do you form the Coke snowflake? Remove the middle third of each segment and then construct the new equilateral triangle. Now, how many more triangles did I just add? Three. I added three more equilateral triangles. So, I'm adding three equilateral triangles. And what's the area of each one? Root 3 over 4 times the sine squared. But what's the length of that side? It's one third of the previous one. So S over 3. Okay, in the next step, you remove the middle third of each segment. Why am I telling you this? I can't believe I'm just like telling you the whole thing. And so forth. How many more triangles did I just add? Okay, you count them yourself. Put that number here times root 3 over 4 times the side squared. But what is the length of that side right there, of that smaller triangle? Are you serious? It's one third. Thank you. S over 9. It's one third of the previous one. I'm not. <laughs> you count how many triangles you just added. Come on, and there's a pattern to that. Okay, then, so this thing goes on forever, right? You stand back and look and you go, hey, you stay one geometric series. <laughs> you stay one geometric. Okay, that's all I'm going to tell you. That's like almost the whole problem I'm giving you right there. Because you know what people, like I said, they go on the internet and they, they have proofs and stuff like that. They try to memorize it, these things with sigmas and all of that. You don't need that. Just write it out and hey, geometric. Okay, that's all you're getting. It's on video. Everybody can see that. So right before the, right before the quiz, it's going to have like 40, no, how many people are at PCH? 51 views. Probably gonna be like eight because you gotta watch some of you gotta watch it twice. So. Okay, here we go. How much time do we got? Okay, here we go. Now, so last night, if you have an infinite geometric series, then you have a formula. It's so easy. Now the problem is what happens if it's not geometric? What do you do? Like what about this problem here? N equal one to infinity, one over n times n plus one. Okay, how do I know this is not gonna be geometric before I even start? Okay, give you a look at this formula here. Huh? 
In order for it to be geometric, what does this formula have to be? Yeah, a number to the nth power. Do I see a number to the nth power? Wait, let me look. No, so you know it's not going to be here. Or how about just write out the first few terms and just see? Okay, plug in one, go. What? One. We can't even plug in one times two. Okay, plug in two. Plug in three. Plug in four. Okay, I think that's good enough. And then you keep on. Now, can you see it's not geometric now? Because to get from there to there, you got to multiply by one third. But then when you go from there to there, you multiply by one and a half, which is not the, a common ratio, right? So it's not. So what do you do when it's not geometric? Well, then you got to rely on the definition, which is in your notes. Okay, let's look at the notes. Because you guys got to learn how to read math, because when you go to college, I get almost guarantee your professor's going to have a strong accent that you can't understand. So you got to read the book. Now what does it say? The sum of an infinite series is equal to the limit of the sequence of its partial sums. What? It's equal to the limit do we, of the sequence. Now do we know how to find limits of sequences? Yeah, we did that last chapter. Yeah, but the sequence of what though? The sequence of partial sums. Now, what the heck is a partial sum? Well, you learned this last year, but I'm going to tell you anyway. What's the first partial sum? It's the sum of the first term. You cannot add one number together. It's a half. So we're going to form a sequence over here of the partial sums. Okay, so this is the first partial sum. What's the second partial sum? Well, that would be the sum of the first two terms. Add the first two. which can be reduced to get two thirds. Okay, now add the first three terms. We call that the third partial sum. I'll give you a hint. Just take this and add one twelfth to it. Thank you. Now add the first four terms. You see, you guys are not, you're just looking at the pattern. <laughs> see, because I made something easy. Okay, on the test, I'm going to tell you right now. If you don't add the numbers correctly, you're not going to see a pattern there, and it's all over but the crime. Okay, there we go. This is the sequence of partial sums. You guys understand that? This is the sum of the first term, the first two, the first three, the first four, the first five, and so forth. Can we write an explicit formula for this sequence? Yes, we're really good at explicit formulas. And over. Very good. The limit of this sequence is the answer is the sum of the infinite series. Now, do we know how to find limits of sequences? Wow. Yes. Hey, if it's rational, you just compare the degree of the top and the bottom, and when they're the same, you look at the coefficients. What? One. So that means if you keep on num adding these numbers forever, you will get exactly one. Because that's the limit of the sequence of the partial sums. So anytime you have a series that is not geometric, this is what you got to do. So that's what you're going to do on number 1A and 1B of tonight's homework. Okay, one more example. And then I'm going to, since we're videoing, I'm going to review KISS, our KISS data, because if you don't know that, you're in deep trouble for tonight's homework. Oh yeah, I wasn't even going to do it tonight, Mr. Park. I showed you. <laughs> one times one times one. I'm trying to make something similar to the homework. Times 2 times 3 times 4 plus 3 times 5 times 7 plus 4 times 7 times 10 all the way until you hit, okay, the other class we did 20, let's do 30. 30 times 59. No. Eighty-eight. I gotta make sure it comes out. Okay, compute this number. No calculator. Look, it looks like number two, Mr. Park. Yeah, that's right. I'm showing you how to. This is an example. How do you compute this number? Of course, if you want to. 
I mean, even if I did let you use a calculator, what would you do? One times one times one <laughs> plus two times three times four plus three times five times seven, and you just keep punching in. Is that what you do? What if okay? What if I made that number instead of thirty three hundred? You will keep punching in. No. Oh, I forgot to even teach you before. Okay, put this problem on. I forgot to teach you the lesson. Okay, come over here. We have, this is what we have to know before we can even do this problem. Okay, go back to, I, I believe in pre-algebra, this is where you first learned it. What is 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way until you hit n? Okay, n times n plus 1 over 2, right? What? Hey, Mr. Park, that's the formula for the triangular numbers. Yeah, that's because when you add consecutive integers like this, you get the triangular numbers. See, so look, 1, and then if I add 2 to that, you get 3, right? If I add 3 to that, you get 6. If I add 4 to that, you get 10. That's why that's the formula for the triangular numbers. Whatever, Mr. Park. Okay, what about 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared until you hit n squared? Is there a formula for that? Yeah. You bet your bippy there is. n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. And don't tell me you never saw that before. What about cubes, Mr. Park? Is there a formula for that? You bet your sweet bippy there is. So, all the way until you hit n cubed, the formula is n times n plus 1 all over 2, quantity squared. Now that's all I'm going to require you to memorize, okay? However, I remember every so many years, I put this problem on the test. Fill in the box. What about fourth powers? Okay, so let's assume we know these first three formulas here. How can I use that to solve this problem right here? Hmm. Okay, I'm just going to tell you at the same time. First step, write this using sigma notation. So this is equal to what, what variable you want to use? Let's do something different. Let's do k then. k equal 1, 2. First of all, how many terms are here? Yeah, there's 30. Can you see why there's 30? Because look, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then ends on 30. From 1 to 30, that's 30 numbers. Okay, now what's the explicit formula I put here to generate these numbers? Now look at the first number. 1, 2, 3. How do you generate 1, 2, 3? N. Okay, now look at the second numbers. 1, 3, 5. Hey, those are the odd numbers. Common difference 2, 2n minus 1. Okay, now look at the third numbers, 1, 4, 7. Hey, common difference 3, 3n minus 2. There you go. So first step, write this series using sigma notation. Next step, multiply it out. Okay, multiply this out. Who's going to do it? Hanoka, redeem yourself. <laughs> multiply this out. All that? Well, dude, look, foil that and then multiply by n. Come on. Even Sokka did it in period 6. Oh, he's a genius. So. Mm, no, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> okay, so you had n times 6n squared minus. Um, so 6n cubed. 6n cubed. squared minus 7n okay, squared. Seven squared. Um, um, minus plus 2n. There you go, see? You can do it. Nervous in the whole class. Okay, now, watch what I'm going to do. Watch what I'm going to do. K equal 1 to 30. Is, can I do this? Can I make separate sigmas? Like this? Split it up into separate sigmas. K equal 1 to 30. 2n. Is that legal? Yes. Yeah, you know why? It says so in the notes. Yeah, anytime you add or subtract, you can split it up into separate sigmas. Because it's just, all that is, is just you're regrouping the terms. Okay, now can I do this? You see the 6. Can I take this 6 and put it outside the sigma? Yes. 
Yes, because if every single term has a 6 in it, can't you factor it out? Yeah. Just say yes, it doesn't matter what I say. Give me $100. <laughs> okay, so all I did is put the numbers on the outside. Now, okay, now watch this. Look at this right here. What is this? Hey, wait a minute. We're using N. There's a K here. We should have just stuck with N. I don't know why I changed it. Let's go back to the N. Okay, what is this? No, you plug in 1, you get 1 cube. Plug in 2, you get 2 cube plus 3 cube all the way to 30 cube. Mr. Park, how do I figure that out? Right here. What is 1 cube plus 2 cube plus 3 cube all the way up to 30 cube? What is it? Look at that formula. You're looking at it right there. 30 times 31 over 2 quantity squared. Okay, let's look at the next one. Minus 7 times this. Now, what is that? Well, if I... Okay, where is this K coming from? This should be N. Strike! What? This is 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared all the way up until you hit 30. Hey, that's this one over here. So what is that equal to? 30 times 31 times People, you cannot plug in 30. 61 all over 6. And then finally, this last one. Okay, so this is 2 times. Now, what is this? 1 plus 2 plus 3, all the way until you hit 30. And it's this one. So what is that? 30 times 31 all over 2. Oh, God. And there's your answer. So you write that down on your paper, I give you 7 out of 8 points. You want the 8th point, you got to compute it. Now I think last year on the quiz I let them use a calculator even. So if you want to just type it in like this, 1 times 1 times 1, you can, you know. Plus 2 times 3 times 4. But then that means you got to write it all out because you guys going to get lost somewhere in there. But this is how you do the problem. Okay, last thing for today. Let's just do a quick review of Arcus Theta. Oh boy. Okay, when you have a complex number like 2 root 3 plus 2i, what form is this called? Standard form. We can also write it in what's called polar form, Arcus theta. Okay, so in the complex plane, you have the real and the imaginary axis. So what is the real part? So if you go 2 root 3 to the right, and the imaginary part is, and then you go 2 up. If you go 2 root 3 to the right and 2 up, how far from the origin are you? Four. Rhymes with more. Four. Four. You know how I know? Because that's a 30. If one leg is root 3 times the other leg, that means it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, which means the hypotenuse is double the short leg. And what's that angle there? That's 30 degrees, or pi over 6, I don't care which one you use. So when you convert it into polar coordinates, what is R? R is how far you are from the origin. 4. 4, and what's that angle right there? Okay, now I'll put pi over 6. You can put pi over 6 at 30 degrees. Okay, so that's how you convert from standard form into polar form. But the reason why we learn polar form is because we can apply these theorems. Now, do you guys remember um, Dimov's theorem? Okay. Of course not. Like, what if I said, take this number, and I want you to raise it to the eighth power? Well, change it to polar form, and then raise that to the eighth power then. Because we learned the theorem. Yeah, what is Dimov's theorem? How do you raise a polar a complex number in polar form to the eighth power? You raise r to that power. Does that sound familiar? And then what do I do with this angle? You multiply it by eight. That's Dimov's theorem. And then you put it back into the R A plus B I form. Because remember, KISS is an abbreviation for what? 
cosine theta plus i sine theta, where this is the theta right there. And then you just distribute that number and then you can get your answer. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> okay, because if you don't know that, then you wouldn't be able to do 3C and D on tonight's homework, and you weren't going to do it anyway. And then, to separate the sheep from the goats, 3E. So I'm going to do the same thing tomorrow. Let's see. How many people from each class can do 3E? Okay, the bell's going to ring in. Oh, I thought we were going to finish early. The bell's going to ring in two minutes. Oh, taping.